Hi everyone, today we are talking about the slopes of linear graphs. In our last lesson we talked about what linear graphs are, so that's basically when you have an equation in y equals mx plus b form, and you end up with a straight line. So slope, which is the m, uh, or the number being multiplied by x, it actually tells you how steep a straight line is. So we use slope to communicate how steep a straight line is. That's what that number means. And if you remember, we basically connect two of those points and we utilize the formula rise over run, how much you're going up the vertical change over how much you're going across the horizontal change. Horizontal with a T in there. There's a typo in the book. Okay, um, you may think that we don't actually use this, but we actually do. Um, in roller coasters, when they're designing and actually building roller coasters, they have, they have to consider the slope, how steep uh, you're going up or going down to figure out how safe that roller coaster is going to be. Um, surfers have to instinctually gauge how steep a wave is going to be and how they need to change their bodies. And then this is actually um, information from the ADA handbook, which is the American Disabilities Act. Uh, there's regulations on how steep a ramp can be when you're designing it uh, for a building. So if you notice there, you can see the words rise, you can see run, uh, because every ramp is going to have different, you know, measurements, but they all do have to follow guidelines for the slope. So that when somebody is using a wheelchair or walking up slowly because they need the assistance, it needs to be, you know, safe and comfortable for somebody to walk on. All right, so let's talk more about slopes, starting with positive slopes. Positive slopes are when you have lines that are kind of going upwards. So if you think about reading from left to right, it means going from left to right, it's going upwards, okay? That means as your x is increasing, getting bigger, your y values are also increasing. So x and y are both increasing. That's from left to right. Okay, so we're going to just review the rise over run using these positive slopes. And we have a question here. Which line do you think has a steeper slope? Line one or line two? Just by eyeballing it, just by looking at it. If you said that it was a line one, you are correct. It is going up, it's changing at a much quicker pace. While line two is kind of, it's increasing, but at a slower pace. So if you want to think about it, like which one is easier for a wheelchair to go up? Well, it's definitely a line two. It's not as steep. Okay, so let's take a look at their rise over run. They chose two different points and they made a triangle. And they're basically saying, okay, when I'm running, I'm changing one unit, plus one. And then when I'm going up, it's plus one, two, three. So this slope is a rise over run. Rise is how much is going up. Run is how much is going across. Up three, positive three, and a run of one. So at the end, you can say that the slope is three. For line two, Again, finding two points and connecting them with a triangle. My run is going from two to four, so it's going plus one and two to get to four. And then my rise is plus one to get from one to two. So this slope, this rise over run is, let's see, our rise was plus one and our run was plus two. This slope is one half. So the steeper, line had a bigger slope, 
three is bigger than one half. Okay, so the bigger the number for m, the slope, the steeper it actually is. So the value of the slope can tell us a lot of information about what the line actually looks like. That's our positive slopes. Let's take a look at our negative slopes. Okay, these are negative because remember reading from left to right, these lines are going downwards. Okay, for positive, your x and your y were both increasing together. Here, your x's are getting bigger. x is increasing, but here y value is decreasing. It's going, if we look at this point, going from 5 all the way down to 2. But y is decreasing. So they're going in opposite directions here. Which line is steeper? Line 3 or line 4? If you said line 4, you are correct. This top one is steeper. It's going down at a much quicker pace. So let's see how their slopes are different. Again, slope, you need to find two different points. So let's find this point and let's see what was the other point that they had here. This point and this point, they had Actually, let's use the other line. This point right here at 1, 2, and this point right here at 5, 1. Okay, so rise over run, you need to create a triangle. This run is going from 1 to 5. To get from 1 to 5, you have to add 1, 2, 3, 4. 1 plus 4 could get you to 5. And now we're here going from 2 down to 1 is a minus 1 because we're going down, right? So then the slope is equal to my rise over run. Rise was a negative 1 and my run was a positive 4. So this slope was negative 1 fourth. If we were to look at the other line, so this one was negative one fourth. Let's see, we need, we need this line to be extended because I can't really see any nice numbers here. Let's extend this line to right there. Okay, and then I'm gonna use different colors. So I'm, I have a point right here Right, it falls right on 2, 4. And then I have a point right here that falls right on 6 and 1. I didn't like the numbers, that the two points that they had. They weren't as clear. They didn't fall on good numbers. So we're going to make our own triangle here. All right, rise. I'm moving from 1 up to 4. Rising 1, 2, 3. Because 1 plus 3 will get to 4. Okay, now I'm here. Now I'm moving from six backwards to two, so I'm subtracting, subtracting one, two, three, four. Okay, so now you notice that there are negative numbers in these negative slopes. Okay, so this slope is rise over run. The rise was positive three, the run was negative four. Okay, so this line has a slope of negative three-fourths, while the other one had negative one-fourth. Which one is actually bigger? Well, the three-fourths is bigger, right? It has three-fourths, while this one is one-fourth. So even with the negative slopes, the bigger your number is, the steeper it is. Okay, so for negatives, you have to be careful, am I adding? to get to the other number, or am I subtracting? Usually you can remember if you're going up, you are adding. If you're going down, you're subtracting, right? And then it's a little trickier with um, left and right. Going to the right, I'm getting bigger numbers, right? From one, two, three, four, five, six. Going to the left, I'm getting smaller numbers, four, three, two, one, zero, negative one. So it's kind of like 
thinking about how numbers change on a number line. Up and down is pretty easy. Up is plus, down is minus. Left and right, it's a little harder. You gotta think about, am I moving more towards my positive numbers or am I moving more towards my negative numbers? So I like to remember it that way. So if you need to, please add stuff to your notebook because I know people in general tend to have more issues with negative slopes. So this right here definitely needs to go in your notebook. All right, and lastly, we have special cases. So if you remember from our last lesson, when you have a horizontal or a vertical line, it's a little different than a diagonal line. It's not possible for us to draw triangles when we have a horizontal or a vertical line, right? It's just, there's, there's no triangles there. Um, but what you do have to remember is that the slope of a horizontal line, this red line here, is zero. Okay, because it doesn't have a run. I'm gonna end up not, or it, it has a, doesn't have a rise. Remember, it's a rise over run. Okay, so since it doesn't rise, it's horizontal, it's gonna have a slope of zero. And then conversely, for a vertical line, your slope is undefined because it doesn't have a run. It doesn't run across. Um, so if you have a rise, but no run, remember, we can't have anything uh, being divided by zero. So that's why that slope is undefined. It's impossible. You cannot um, divide anything by zero because there's no run here. So it's going to technically be a zero for your denominator. Okay. Well, for a horizontal line, you have no uh, rise, but you do have a run. So that's why the answer ends up being zero because zero divided by any number is still going to be zero. Okay, so those are your special cases. So I know a lot of people like to write rise over run on the side and then they'll figure out, okay, which one is the zero? Which one is it that I can't do? For a vertical line, I cannot run because it's just going up and down. And since it's run that's on the denominator, oh, I know that's impossible, I can't divide anything by zero. So that's undefined. For the horizontal line, I can't rise and rise is on the top because it's rise over run. So I know that's a zero at the end. All right, let's work on a couple of examples from our book. Here's example four from your book. It says the vertices of triangle ABC are those points given. Find the slopes of the sides of triangle A, B, and C. All right, so we first got to plot them and then you have to find the slopes for each of the sides. Go ahead and pause the video and try it on your own first. Okay, so you should have plotted 1, 1 for A. Let's see, negative 2, positive 3 for B. And then C is 3, 3. Okay, so here's A, B, and C. And then I'm going to connect these points with the straight line because later on I'm gonna need these lines to figure out the slope. I'm going to use a different color. So I need to first figure out the slope here. Ooh, triangles within triangles. But my red one is gonna be my original triangle. Okay. So let me actually go ahead and Cut. No, I won't color it in because then I just can't see the lines. All right, my red is my original triangle. I'll have to remember that. So let's see. From B to C, that one's easy. Line BC, I don't, I have a straight line across, right? So my rise over run is going to be a special case. Can I rise here going from one point to another? No, I can't. I can only run, right? So my rise is zero and my run is whatever, some number, we'll put three. Zero divided by three is zero, okay? So for line BC, the slope is zero because it's a horizontal line. 
Let's look at line AB. Still going to use rise over run. Here I do have a diagonal line, so I can use rise over run. These are my two points. Rise, start here, going down 2, so that's minus 2, going down is negative. And then going to the right, more towards my bigger numbers is positive. 1, 2, 3. So that's plus 3. So for a line AB, I have a rise of negative 2 and a run of positive 3. So this is my answer. My slope is negative 2 thirds. I want to keep it as a fraction so that people know what's my rise and what's my run. Okay, the only time I'm going to simplify it is if it can be simplified to a whole number or if it can be reduced. But negative 2 thirds, I'm going to keep it like that. I'm not going to put it into my calculator, make it into a decimal because this actually gives people a lot of information. They can see, ah, my rise is negative 2. Ah, my run is 3. But if you change it into a decimal, then people are like, oh, i got to change it back into a fraction to figure out what's actually going on. So that's a great thing about uh, slope. All right, let's figure out our slope for AC. Again, rise over run. My rise, okay, I'm starting here. I'm going down 1, 2, going down 2. And then now I'm over here going to the left 2, so that's negative 1, 2. Okay, also negative 2. So I have a rise of negative 2 and I have a run of negative 2. Here I can reduce. They both can be reduced by 2. Okay, 2 divided by 2 is 1. And then 2 divided by 2 is 1 as well. Oh, so that's really just 1. I can just keep that as 1. And then I have two negatives. Remember, a negative times a negative is a positive, so it ends up just being 1. That I can reduce because it can be reduced to a whole number. So those are my three slopes. A slope of 0 for BC because it was just a horizontal line. A slope of negative 2 thirds for... Uh, a, B. Oh, look at that. That's also decreasing. A line decreasing is going to be negative, so that checks out. And then A, C is a line that's increasing, so that's why those two negatives cancel out to it become a positive. So my answers make a lot of sense. All right, let's move on to example five from the book. Here they want you to plot the points A, B, and C on the coordinate plane and draw the straight line L that passes through the three points. Then find the slope of the line using the points A and B, B and C, and A and C, and then figure out what we observe. All right, um, I'm very curious to see what's gonna happen then. So go ahead and pause the video and try it on your own first. Okay, you should have plotted negative one and negative four, that's A. Then 0, negative 2, that's B. And then 3, 4, that's C. All right, and then they said to draw a straight line L through my points, which I can, so that's good. And, okay, that was A. Now we have to find the slope of the line L using the points A and B first. So let's use A and B. So if I figure out the slope for A and B, I need to use these two points, A and B. Draw myself a triangle. So the slope of A and B is going to be rise over run. My rise is up 1, 2. And my run is up 1 because it's moving to the right one spot. So rise over run. Okay, so that ends up being 2. Let me rewrite it over here. All right. And then let's see. Let me make some room over here. Then I need to figure out the slope using B and C. So here's B and C. Ooh, that's a big triangle. All right. So slope of line BC, rise over run again, going up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, positive 6. And then my run going to the right, so that's positive as well, adding on, 
one, two, three. Rise was six, run was three. Six divided by three is two. Oh, also two. Hmm. Okay. And then the next one is figure out the slope using A and C. Okay. So from the very bottom to the very top. Oh, an even bigger triangle. All right, going up, so it's adding on positive. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus eight. Going to the right, adding on one, two, three, four. Okay, so then the slope of AC, rise over run, we got the rise of positive eight and a run of positive four. Eight divided by four is two. Hmm, what do you observe about the slope of line L found in B? Well, we observe that it's all the same. It's the same exact slope. So let's write that down. We got the same slope no matter which two points we used. What was the only difference though? The difference was that for some of them we had to reduce, right? The further away our points were, the bigger our numbers were, and then we had to reduce. While A and B were closer together, and it was just like two divided by one, which was two, yeah? So uh, closer points, didn't need much reducing. So that's a good thing to know for the future, right? If you had the choice between two close points and two far away points, hello, I would choose the two close points. I have less counting, so I'm gonna make less mistakes. Um, and then I don't have to reduce as much. I don't have big numbers at the end. That's definitely something good to know for the future. But that is slope, guys.